Howdy, folks. We are live with the Metaphysical Art Gallery. Today at the Metaphysical Art Gallery is presenting our featured artist, Ro Libretto. Hi, Ro. Hi, Katie. Thanks for having me today. Let me uh, get you on a larger screen here. There we go. I can see you a little better now. Okay. Well, I'm going to start shifting around on my seat. So there. You can see more of my studio if I shift. So awesome. How how you doing, Ro? Um, I'm doing pretty good. You know, um, Ghost Wolf Gallery is back. So I'm back to my regular schedule. I'm there every Thursday. And I'm back to painting. I feel like the COVID panic has finally subsided. So I'm starting to get back to my usual self. Right and on. you? And you? What do you what's up with you? Oh boy, I I'm kind of all over the place. I um, manage a few websites for a, a few people, so I've been having to do some of that. And um, I also have the you know the podcast and yeah. all the other stuff I do. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, you got your hands full. Yeah, I've, I've been trying to catch yeah. up on your podcasts. I saw the Amy Bowling one the other day. Oh, was she was great. Amy was yeah. great. That was really interesting to me. She talked about all the different types of jobs she held and how everything relates. And um, I found that really relevant in my own life because, I mean, if you look at my resume, I'm all over the place. I did all kinds of jobs in my life. I mean, I taught school and um, I worked in a newspaper office and I worked in uh, a couple of large publishing houses and I had my own company for a while. Uh, Paint motorcycles. I had a customizing shop oh, that's on the lower right. side, right? So I did that, and you know, it's that it's that trying to find the place for your creativity. How can I use my gift and make a living at it? You know, there was always that was always a problem. But, uh, yeah, that's yeah. always the balancing act is trying to figure that out. It but is. you, uh. You, you've had it figured out now for a minute, haven't you? <laughs> for a minute. For a minute. I'm doing okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, tell us, uh, tell us about what you've been up to with your work. Um, currently, I'm working on a, a new series there, uh, 36 by 36 inch squares. So they're Instagrammable, right? We got to put it out there so people can see it. And they're um, on wood panels. So... I like working on paper because it's more intimate and I like the tactile quality of a loaded watercolor brush. You know, you fill it up with some water and some dye and when it touches the paper that that watercolor just sucks into the paper and it's, I don't know, it's tactile. I really like it. It's kind of sexy. But um, the experience of painting on a panel board with watercolor is feels very tentative to me. The panel boards are not as accepting of the dye as the watercolor paper is. Oh, I, yeah. I, right? Now, I know it's a really different experience when you're using, like, the watercolor flow painting. Is that it? The acrylic flow paint, which is yeah. made for yeah. that. Yeah, that's that's made for that surface, and I have not yet tried those products. I'm still old school using my translucent watercolors and gouache. So, um, you know, creates a little anxiety, but... But I'm working through it. <laughs> I'm, through it. <laughs> I'm getting on the other side of it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. so so what's been uh, what's been the symbolism in in your pieces lately? What the? Well, I think I was COVID stuck for a year. It was really hard for me to feel optimism, and my my paintings. the The message that comes to me in majority of my paintings is always one of accepting the challenge and being hopeful about being able to resolve any obstacles that you're facing. And COVID really freaked me out. I had a total mental shutdown. I, I wasn't getting any information from the other side, <laughs> which was freaking me out. Um, I was suffering with a, um, a foot problem, so I wasn't able to walk. Usually I'll walk and I'll hear voices while I'm walking. So yeah. for about eight or nine months, I, I didn't get my pace going. So I kind of lost contact with that part of the world and and that part of the world, that part of my universe, you know, my, my reality. And once you start to slip, 
then you start to wonder if you're still an artist, you know, <laughs> those doubts start <laughs> to creep in and like, maybe I'm just like everybody else, but I'm really not like everybody else. Because as soon as I think it was right before the election, so it must have been around October, I started getting messages of hope and um, charity. I, I don't know if you're aware in the Catholic church, they have a thing or the Catholic religion, they have a thing called the three theological virtues and they are faith, hope, and charity. And one morning I woke up and we used to have to memorize this stuff. You know, what are the three theological virtues? The three <laughs> theological virtues are faith, hope, and charity. So when I woke up that morning, I could hear it in my head. It kept saying three theological virtues. They're virtues. They're absolutely like if, if you can keep the faith and be hopeful and be charitable in times of stress, that's a really hard thing to do. And, and I think that that's why they're considered virtues, because they're such a hard thing to do. So because the rhythm of those words kept playing it over and over in my head, I said, it must be time. I must have to now make three works. So the first one that I put out was called Hope. And um, it's all over Facebook. I mean, I put it out there. It's got the two fish. Oh, one yeah. Is, right? One is rising yeah. and the other one is like falling into the tumultuous sea of emotions and he's all stressed out and shit. And, um, and it has an anchor in it. And of course, the, the anchor is a symbol of hope in um, m many systems iconographies. I mean, you can look around. and But I, the more I thought about it, the more I was like, well, now hope can be an, an anchor that in times of trouble, you are, uh, you have a base, you have something holding you in place, but it could also be mm -hmm. the thing that brings you down. Like if you put your hope in something and that something that you put your hope in is, um, it, it, it doesn't turn out the way you wanted it to be. It could really depress you and it could sink you in in, a, in an emotional turmoil, right? Yeah. So as I thought about it, I realized that hope has two sides then. It can be like so many things in life, right? Nothing is one thing or the other. There's all these grays in, in reality, yeah. right? And the, and the sooner we accepted the fact that there's all these gradations of something and it's not just bipolar, it's this way or that way, the, the easier it is for us to adapt to, to life in general. So anyway, when I realized that, that kind of insight came to me, I decided I was going to call the piece the duality of hope. And, uh, and I did. And I painted it. And it's um, translucent watercolor, gouache, and metallic acrylic paint on panel board. Cool. Can I pull an image of it up somewhere? Uh, is there one somewhere? Because I know. Um, it's... Did you put it on your website? Because uh, um... mm -mm, I didn't get a professional shot of it yet. Oh, so it's but... only on the social medias, huh? Yeah, let's see if I can okay. find it on social media. And I'll... I'm looking for me on social media. Where am I? I am here and I need my pages. My page is this one. Because, you know, you're always more than one person when you're on social media, right? You're your business. You're yourself. <laughs> yeah. You're like, I'm in here somewhere. I know it. I know it. And I finished it before we started the promotions for this show, for this interview. So let's see. Come on. Come on. It's down here somewhere. It's nice to see. Um, is that evolution in, in the background? In the background? Yeah, it is. And if I sit just right, you can like see through my head. Oh, here it is. Okay. So I should click on it. And then let's see how I share my screen in this. There's a little button down here, right? Share. Yeah. Yeah. Share screen. Uh, yeah. Share screen. Whatever. Okay, guys. Let me pull it up here. So this is it. Can you see it now? It's not sharing your screen yet. Okay. Let's go back. There it says sharing screen. Oh, share. It gives me a second opportunity and to share audio. Share my entire screen. Yes. Oh, do you have to give me permission to share my screen, Katie? Um, I I don't think so. Um, but if well, well 
No, let's not worry about it. Let's tab Facebook. There it is. Share. There it is. Can you see it now? Yeah, I see it now. I okay. just stream. Oh, there it is. The fish with the anchor. Yeah, and they're koi fish or goldfish. The yeah, koi... well, I, I use the koi fish to uh, as a symbol for emotions. And um, I think that I'm trying to think of other paintings that you might have seen them in. You probably saw them in Remission, which was the painting about my sister having cancer. Oh, wow. Was, so they're in that one, too. And here they are aspiring to good things happening and heading into that kind of emotional turmoil down here, these waves, kind of Japanese woodblock looking waves. And of course, yeah. the, the spirit up here, which you can also see back in the evolution, uh, that that's a Catholic icon. It's uh, the Holy Spirit, which is considered the the being from which all inspiration flows. And in my work, it's a symbol of uh, connection to the higher consciousness, because you know, I believe that we're all connected. Yeah. Right up there somewhere, in whatever that giant database in, in the sky, is, <laughs> wherever, wherever the hell it is, so there it is. All right, I'm gonna stop sharing so that I can talk to you guys again. Let's see, where are all you? All right. You're here, there you are. So um, let's see what else has been going on. Oh yeah, the other thing that's been going on is, you know, I have a painting in a show in Dallas, Texas right now. Oh, wow, what's going on with that? Um, there's a gallery out there called New Muse Contemporary Art in Dallas. It's a con obviously contemporary art gallery. And I was accepted, into, I was juried into a show of women's work called Reflections. Cool. And a portion of the sales of artwork, a portion of whatever is sold during that show, goes to fund an organization called In My Shoes. And their Instagram tag is live, uh, what do you call that, a dash, the lower dash? In my underscore. Shoes. Underscore, thank you very much. So it's live underscore in my shoes. And so what I did was I decided that as long as that show is going on, which is till the end of March, that I would donate a portion of the sales of the Jacle of the painting that was accepted into that show to this organization. And the painting that they took is called Weight of Compassion. Oh, it's, I love that piece. Have you seen that one? Oh, yeah. Yeah. The symbolism in that piece is spectacular. I love it because yeah. it's true. It's like <laughs> <laughs> you're... <laughs> You're stressed out. You got all this stuff you're trying to do. You're trying to lift all this stuff and you're like trying to work it out and figure it out. And everybody wants to help. And when they want to help, it's like, sometimes it's like, please don't help. You want to help? Don't help. <laughs> Not helping is the best. And I think that I can share this. If I can figure out how to do it again, I can show it to you. Share, share screen, share screen. Now, see, now I'm going to figure out exactly how to do it. <laughs> share audio. How did I do it last time? Chrome tabs. I'm getting an education just doing these with you, Katie. Can you see the painting? Yeah, there it is. Okay. So, again, here's our higher consciousness, the divine self, which is always around overseeing us. And here is somebody standing on the head of a pin, carrying the weight of the universe on their shoulders, doing the best they can to get by. And all these little suckers here, 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 those are all friends who want to help. <laughs> and uh, what well, they seem to be doing is adding to the load, making it even harder to carry the load that she's got to carry. Yeah, because then you got to deal with all your friends and be like, what do you need? <laughs> That's right. That's right. You know, how about like when you're depressed, sometimes when somebody reaches out, doesn't it make you feel really guilty? Oh, yeah. Depression is a funny one. Like when you feel down, you don't want to bring other people down. So, right. Um, right. I, I, I do a lot of, um, I fake that I'm okay just to get distracted. Oh. Yeah. I think that I'm okay and I just ask somebody else how they're doing and get, you know, 
a little wrapped up outside my world. Yeah. You know, get, yeah. get outside my head. And that seems to help. Yeah. Sometimes it helps, but sometimes well, for me, when I get in a slump, I don't want to feel like I'm being a burden on the other people who love me. I don't want to be, you know, that person is bringing them down. Yeah. So to, to be trying to balance my load and then have everybody go, well, tell me what I could do to help you. Or can I do this for you? Let me fix that for you. Let me shop for you. Let me do. And I'm like, can you just wait until I kind of settle out and I can see if I need help? You're freaking me out here. You know? <laughs> but anyway, so that's, that's what this painting is about. And if you notice, there's roses, the kind of uh, rambling roses that are happening. Yeah. And in uh, Druid iconography or mythologies, the rose bushes and their rambling way symbolize um, if you relax into the universe, abundance will come, right? So they think of roses in those terms as an as a ideal way to live. Yeah, your life is hard, but if you just relax, you'll bloom in the spring, you know, despite all the brambles and crap you have to go through. And wow. of course, the, the grapevines have always been a symbol of abundance in a number of European cultures. So that's what's up here is the grapevines. So there's much abundance, much love, the desire to relax, the desire to give up to your higher self. Here's the little hands offering up to the higher self. But here you are stuck in the real world, standing on the head, the pin, and everybody's just like climbing on top of you. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so that's the painting that is currently being shown at New Muse Contemporary Art in Dallas, Texas. And um, this is the painting that I will be offering as a jacle. So let's see if you can go to featured work on my website. You can all still see this, right? Yeah, we see uh, it. Okay, so this is my featured work page and it's the weight of compassion. If you click on the jacle, it will take you to a page where you can purchase this. It's $175 and add it to your cart. Shipping will be calculated there. And I will take 20% of the proceeds from the sale of this painting and I will send it to Living in My Shoes, that uh, nonprofit organization. So that's my way of showing sol solidarity for the New Muse Contemporary Arts efforts. And awesome. I'm going to stop sharing that. So that's a big deal for me now. That's going on. And, and uh, Let's put your website as a banner here. Um, is it is it Ro Libretto? Fineart.com. So after you posted evolution today, was that today? It was such a long day. When you posted, uh, you posted oh, yeah. right? Yeah. You posted evolution. I was like, oh yeah, man, because that's how I feel. Like that's kind of <laughs> how I run my life. I wait for that little voice to say. Now's the time to jump ship, or now's the time to change direction, or now's the time to make a painting. I wait for that little voice to come. So when I put this painting up, I was like, let's see, I can sit right here. And it looks like the voice is talking inside my ear. Right. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I may be the only one who thinks that's funny, but I think that was kind of funny. <laughs> And of course, there's the higher consciousness up there. Let's see if I can turn in the proper direction. You see the higher consciousness up there? Yeah. In the painting? Yeah. Yeah. There it is there. It's in a lot of my stuff. Yeah. You know, I made um I made a piece for you. I'm gonna really? show it to you. Yep, it's for you. Hold on, I'll grab it. That's flattering. That's really flattering. I'll have to bring these to you, but um, they're all dusty. <laughs> I finished this uh, a little while ago, but I started it forever ago and dedicated it to you. Uh. It is a diptych, but it goes up and down. 
So it goes like this. It goes like this. It's a whoa. It's a person holding an umbrella. And you see the spirit? Yes, I do. That's wow, for that's you. Gorgeous. Oh, Katie, that's so beautiful. It's got a rainbow. Oh. And there's paint raining down from the sky. <laughs> hitting the black umbrella. Wow. And and this, this is, is a, this the is the hand end of it. <laughs> yeah, this is this is the puddle. And the hand is holding up, up the black umbrella. I see it. Yeah. Oh my God, Katie, it's just just gorgeous. Thanks, Ro. Wow. Okay. I'm. Um, that's it. I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of feel inconsequential now. That's that's very cool. No, man, <laughs> don't feel inconsequential. Oh my God, that's beautiful. That is absolutely Thanks. beautiful. Thanks. It's wow. um. It's mixed media, so it's on a wood panel. And, and I it, used I started with water-based stuff like uh -huh. you do. Yeah, yeah. And stained the wood. And then I went over it with oils. And then I went over it with resin. And then I painted on top of the resin and added Holy dyes crap. to it. Holy and crap. That's what gives it the depth. When yeah, you put resin got a lot and you of paint depth. on top of the resin, right? And then you yeah. put on top of that, it kind of floats it right in the middle. Yeah, it's hard to paint on resin awesome. though. It's like painting on glass. Yeah, yeah. I used to, when I used to paint motorcycles, that was a thing. We used to call it. Um, you you would sink your drawing, so you would put your base coat of paint, and then you put a color coat and a coat of resin, and then you paint on that. You paint your design on the top of the uh, clear clear coats is what we called it, right? And then yeah. you'd put another clear coat on top of that and you do more of the drawing on top of that and it had that optical illusion in the light you could look at it from an angle and it looked three-dimensional oh cool yeah it was really cool yeah I, the guy who taught me how to do it his name is ron coco i don't know if he's still out there if he's still doing it but um he was a master at shooting paint i learned so much from working with him I, it was just a pleasure mm -hmm. That's and, cool. Do you yeah. do you ever still use airbrush? Do you have an airbrush? An I air have gun? an airbrush. I have an airbrush. I haven't used it in a zillion years. Yeah. Oh man. You know what it was? It was the equipment. I hate complicated equipment. You know, oh, my life is complicated yeah. enough. I don't want to have to worry that if I put the damn thing down, it's going to clog. It's, it's like, do you remember rapidograph pens? Do you remember nope. the old? They were these like, but boy, they pissed me off. <laughs> they had a little head that you had to screw on, and then the body had a cartridge that you filled with ink. And then oh. the heads were like double and triple zero points, so they're really tiny. So if you put it down for two minutes, that tip would clog, and you couldn't get any ink out of it. I hated it. I hated oh. them. And I had a whole set, and I just like got so sick of cleaning them. And then I went through the same shit with the darn airbrushes. I mean, when you're airbrushing a motorcycle, you're doing something big or a car panel or something like that, using a big court jar of yeah paint and a big old fan sprayer and they don't clog so easily you still have to clean them when you're done with them but they don't clog like i put my pen down and now i can't use them anymore so oh yeah and yeah, you got to switch out so many colors when yeah you're making art. yeah 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 it's, yeah that's not for me you know you know juan morales have you seen yeah. the work of juan morales right yeah he does some beautiful airbrush work that guy and he sinks his paint and he does some really sweet stuff on nice. the fan absolute fan because i know how hard it is to do what he's doing and he gets some great Sweet. results yeah we're gonna have to find him track that sucker down and do a <laughs> podcast though a wet stuff podcast with him yeah cool. i i don't know if the wet stuff has him on the calendar yet or not i know we've been we he's on our list of artists we want to interview that's for sure right on well, I'll tag him on this. And let him know that you're looking for him because, <laughs> because yeah, he does some good stuff. But yeah, he does the he does the stuff I don't do anymore. So cool. what else can I tell you? Let's see. Um, if you if you saw my kind of promotional pieces for this interview, I posted pictures of sketches, like how the work starts, because I don't paint directly on the material everything starts off as a sketch or a group of sketches and sometimes i put the sketches 
on my little copy machine and I blow them up and I shrink them down and then I assemble them to get the right proportions for each part of the piece. Oh, wow. I know a lot of artists just go right to canvas and that's it and they're done and they're good with it. But when you work on watercolor paper. It's unforgiving and you got to get everything just right first time. That's right. That's right. You don't want all those lines and erasures. If you erase. Um, erase on, marks. Yeah. And the, and the paint takes differently to wherever you marred the paper because that's a cotton rag paper. It marks the paper. So I do. All, I, I mean, it's how I was trained. I do all the sketches first, get what I want then transfer the sketch onto the surface. And I still do it on the panel boards when I do the big panels like Duality and Hope. That's how they start. They start out as sketches. But what I started doing was, I got this really big drawing paper now. I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna take off my headphones and rattle around in the studio and put okay. something out so you can see, okay? I'll be right okay. back. Okay, cool. Okay, this is big. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Is that cotton rag? Can you see it? Yeah, I can see it. I, I can see it pretty good. Back in so I can hear you. <laughs> All right. Yeah, I we can see phone. it. You can we see, can see it, okay? it pretty good. But yeah. The sketches are hard to see, but the lighting and all. You see, it's a giant pelican in this one. And, oh, yeah. I, this is one of those three that I started at the end of COVID, you know, the end of last year. And this is the one that's for charity. This is the, the concept of charity. Yeah. Did you know that in medieval times, people believed that during times of hunger, Mother pelicans would tear open their chests and bleed so that their youngs could drink their blood. What the hell? <laughs> so, so I said, well, that's charity. So that's why the pelican became a sign of, of charity in medieval times. So that's what I'm working on. This is one of those big ones. But you see, uh, it's paper. It's a piece of paper I'm drawing on. And then what I do is I use a graphite paper behind this. Yeah. And I transfer the drawing using the graphite paper onto the surface so I don't have any erasures on my board. Nice. All right. I'm going to go wow. put this away and sit down. Okay. Stop messing around. Okay. <laughs> don't fall. Okay. I'm back. I see you got I have my transcendental love t-shirt on. You can find them at Redbubble. <laughs> Put my headphones in so I can hear you guys. Hey. I like your cat. Yeah, that's I see that's your kitty. That's Esther. Hi, Esther. Oh, great name. Great name. She's my roommate's cat. She's a sweetie. Yeah, there's another one over here too. She's got fuzzy balls all over her chest. I don't know what she's doing. What are you doing? What is that? What'd you get into? She <laughs> <laughs> cats in the studio. You don't worry about hair and the resin when you're working. Oh God, yes, I worry about it. Because <laughs> you have a I dog do. too, right? You have a cat. I have. Dog. There are three dogs and two cats, and one pair of tweezers. <laughs> <laughs> Pick all the little hairs out of crazy. Yeah, That's yeah, craziness. all the time. Craziness. So um, I started to say that in my promos for tonight's interview, I pulled out some sketches for paintings that I've worked on before. Oh, nice. And I wanted to be able to do like a show and tell. So in the preview, I showed people beware the company you keep. Oh, wow. Cool. All right, there you go. Oh, that'd be a fun coloring page. Yeah. This is big, though. You know, in order to make it a coloring page, I'm going to have to shrink it down. It, in order or you to make it this, a series. You color the series of the yeah, pages yeah, yeah. and, and then, then stick you tear them, them out, right? put them all together. Yeah, like a puzzle. 
that's how I did this. <laughs> really? Okay, I'm gonna see if you can see. Uh, let's see if I can. No, you can't see it on that side. There's a fold right here. So this fold is actually yeah. two pieces of paper taped together. And then oh. There's another fold over here, and there's two pieces of paper taped together here. Okay. And here. But the biggest one I did like that. This is before I got smart and I bought big drawing paper. <laughs> <laughs> this, is, this is this one. You know how sometimes you start to draw something, you don't realize how big it's going to be. Yeah, Have you had that happen where yeah. the drawing just goes bigger than the paper, right? Back in art school, they used to teach us to block the drawing, right? So you know, you go, okay. So I know I only have this much space to do it in, so I have to draw everything to scale. And you make little lines like a grid on your paper, and you go, this goes. Yeah, I don't work like that. I work like this. So I started by drawing. <laughs> I wish that you could actually see it, see it, because it's a riot. All right, let's see. Oh, so wow. I started by drawing. I need to make you big. Hold this, on. This part. Where is it? I got a point here, this part here. And you can actually see the folds in the paper. Wow, cool. Right? You see the folds? Yeah. So the yeah. paper was only that big. And that's oh I, wow! And you taped I, more to it. And I taped it bigger and bigger. It. So I taped up here, and then I taped down here, and I taped over there, and it's got like <laughs> it's nine pieces of paper all taped together in order to make this. And and this is the piece called the artist. I don't know if you recognize Ooh, any of these characters. Yeah, wow, that's cool. Right? Nice. And she's up here somewhere. Where's her head? Her head's in the middle somewhere. Can we see her head? There's her head right there. <laughs> Where is she? Where is she? Here. This way. This way. There she is. There's she's her there. head. There's her head. Wow. Yeah. But I didn't know she was going to have a head. When I started this piece, I thought that this piece was just going to be this. Oh. Just like the tor the the hip bones, the torso with a snake wrapped around it. And then when I started to draw it, she started to appear like, you know, like I could see her. And then I was like, oh, fuck, I didn't get a big enough piece of paper. So I just gave <laughs> more paper to it so that I could, I could make it happen. There, oh, there's the Holy Spirit in that picture. <laughs> there's the Holy Spirit. <laughs> oh, wait. And here's my... Oh, yeah, here's emotions. See? There's my fishes, my koi are in this painting. Yeah, okay. yeah. And then all my carnivorous pigs. Everybody loved the carnivorous pigs. Oh, man. That's wild. They look really savage in the drawing. Yeah. They look more oh, savage man. in the drawing than they do in the painting. But. Wow. I like the one with the fish on his head. Yeah, you know what that's about? That's when What's... you're over, overwhelmed by your emotions. Oh, wow. Like, if, you, if you're doing something really evil, and then one day you realize that this is really evil and I don't want to act like this anymore, I guess it doesn't yeah. have to be really evil. It has to be enough to embarrass you. Where you're like, ah, oh, that was just like, I should not be acting like that. That's a mean thing to say, or it's a, a, a not very woke way to be, some shit like that. So that's that moment of realization. When that comes around, then you, gotta, you get kind of overwhelmed yeah. by it. So you, <laughs> you got your head up a fish's mouth. <laughs> fish kind of overwhelmed you. Yeah, so that's, I mean, that's one of those crazy pieces that just got, it got away from me. I really <laughs> <laughs> like, that big one I was finally finished with it. That's what that is. Let's see if I can remember how to fold it up again. All right, fold it up later. This down. Oh yeah, and in the promo I showed you this. Oh yeah, that's so. Beautiful. This is this is where betrayed came from. Nice, right? You see the the sacred setting, right? The medallions there, like we talked about in our last interview. Yeah. And the heart yeah, on the platter with the knives in it. Yeah. What's the gray? Um, is that the aorta? Like the the heart dying off or yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually it's um it's yes, it is the aorta, but it was used as a decorative element. Oh like a like a leaf. 
You know, oh, like wow. if, you're, if you're putting out a grand meal, you're going to put some parsley on the plate or you're going to put some fancy on the plate. So I yeah. used it as a decorative element. Oh, cool. And you see she's full of emeralds. She's oh, full of those are emeralds. Emeralds oh. are falling out of her and she's got like a tropical forest growing inside of her and all kinds of things. She's, oh, feeling, she's feeling her abundance and she's opening herself up to the universe. And in that moment of opening herself up to the universe, she got stabbed in the heart. <laughs> so, so that's where Betrayed came from. And when I decided I was going to try to paint on panel, you know, Betrayed was my first watercolor on panel. I said, well, I'm not going to create something new and then have it screw up. So I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go take an icon from something else that I did and blow it up. And if I mess it up, I won't feel as bad. So, uh, so that's what I did. I I put this in my enlarger machine. I have one of those overhead enlargers, you know. Yeah. And I, and I blew it up, and it was the first one that I did like that. So, but this is where it came from, and I thought you would enjoy seeing that. So. Yes, absolutely. I love it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And, Thank you for the, sharing. Oh, absolutely. And this one's called The Offering. The Offering. Yeah, uh, whereas the other one is called The Trade. But, uh, you offer it, somebody likes it, they stick knives in it. All right, look, here's something else I got. <laughs> and I think this has words on it, so I'm going to get a magnifying glass. Okay. I figured if we're doing a studio visit, I'll so show you all the crap I don't show anybody else. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right, right? And, Show oh, and tell. Oh, this is a really important thing that I think everybody who's out there who's starting to be an artist or is self-conscious about being an artist, they need to know this. You don't need a big-ass studio. Right. The room that I'm in is maybe 14 by 16, if it's that big. And I share it with my boyfriend, who is a musician and a painter, and his daughter who's 11 years old and she's a creative. So I'm gonna lift up the camera and try not to give you vertigo, but I wanna pan the room so you can see how small it is and how much crap we got stashed in here and where I actually do work. Because if it's a studio visit, I thought you might wanna see that. Okay, yeah. you ready? All right, hold on to your socks. Here we go, we're airborne now. So, <laughs> there's the door. That door leads out to the kitchen. And as I come around the room, there's all my paintings. Most of my paintings are stacked here. There's some paintings that are out in the shed in the backyard, but this is most of what I have. I got some stuff that goes to a gallery, but okay. And I come around the wall and you see that, the, stop shaking the camera. This feels like Blair Witch Project. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'm doing my Blair Witch imitation. Okay, so there's all my stuff. Stacked up high at the very top, those are prints on top of the bookshelf and on top of the rack. There's oh, man. All my paints. You see Morgan's stuff, little Morgan's 11 years old, and that's her stuff on top of the cabinet next to the bookcase. There's chalk and paints. That's her stuff. I come around. There's a projector. There's my printer. Oops, I'm Blair Witch Project. Okay. Now I'm going to move because I, I get dizzy this way. I'm going to come back the other direction. All right, so there's the closet. Now back there are usually works in progress so back there. Oh, okay. And this table that's here, I work on both sides of this. Actually, I work on two sides of this table when I work. This is my drawing table. So you see there's like a little bottle of wine tucked in back there. There's this calendar with a schedule. There's yeah. Books. My little kind of inspiration board is there. Most of the magic happens in this tiny little place. If something is so big, I, I want people to understand how small this is, because if you ever feel intimidated, you don't want to make art because you don't have a big studio, this, is, this works fine. If things get too big for me, I take them outside in the yard and I work in the yard or I'll put something on the kitchen table for a little while. But it's a tiny house, so I can't leave it. Okay, so I'm coming back around the room. This is my boyfriend Jonathan's corner. Like I said, he's a musician and a painter. So a lot of his stuff is here. And 
that's it. That's how tiny this room actually is. Cool. Okay. Uh, get vertigo. Don't get dizzy. I'll put it back. <laughs> Thank you for the tour. Sure. Well, you know, it's a studio visit, and I felt bad that people couldn't actually be in the studio. You couldn't have more than two people in this room anyway because it's so damn small. Yeah. yeah. All right. So that was that. But You got four people in there right now. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> It's insane. Okay, so um, I went to I went to Metaphysical Art Gallery's page, and I tried to pull out sketches of paintings that are available through Metaphysical Art Gallery. And this is another one of them. This is called Nothing Up My Sleeve. Oh yeah, cool. Those, right? Yeah, I remember this. Yeah, and I, I don't know that a lot of people catch the fact that those are bodies up there in that tree. Oh, you I see, didn't. You see the bodies up in the tree here? Oh, man. Let's get a little closer. Oh, wow. Oh, yeah. There's, right? There's breasts, penises, lots of penises. Very Dante and Oh, wow. So that's all there. Tortured souls rooted in an alternate universe. That's kind of what that is. Um, wow. And that's the evil jinn who's trying to lure people into his world, saying, you know, here, come with me and I'll make you famous or I'll make you beautiful. Or I'll give you a million dollars or whatever that he would say. See? <laughs> but he's actually not a very nice guy at all. And oh. back here... Back here is chaos, and it's very hard to see, but she's more apparent in the finished Oh, painting. yeah, I see her. I right? see her, the little torch. She's got a tornado. Yeah, yeah, she's got a tornado coming out of her head. So that was, <laughs> that was this sketch, and I thought that this was going to be a vertical when I started it. And then I realized that to put anything else in it would be superfluous. So I went like this. <laughs> and I said, oh, I'm going to make it square now. It's going to be a square. And that's what I did. And I made it a square. Oh, and, okay. and at the time that I made this painting. I oh, bro, was... we're getting some feedback. Uh -oh. OK. What should I do? Any suggestions? Um, well, I don't know what's causing it. Is your camera in the same location? I have it with my... Yes, it is. Okay. Um... Crap, I don't know. Last time it just went away. Maybe it'll just go away. Is it that... Is it that... Is it's that down? static noise. That icky oh, static noise. No. Yeah, it's back. Well, do you have any more pieces you want to show? I could go on for hours, but if it's staticky, <laughs> I know that I know that I I don't want anybody's eardrums blown out. So I'm going. Let's call it a night. Okay. Okay. Thank you for watching, folks. Yeah, thank you, and hopefully we'll see you again when there's no technical difficulties. Yeah, we'll be back with Ro Libretto and visit her in her studio again in eleven weeks. Eleven weeks? Oh, I'll have lots more stuff to show you. Now. <laughs> 11 weeks. All right. Thanks, Ro. Yeah. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.